Hello and welcome to Unity of Columbus. My name is Darren Wells and I am your Board of Trustees President and it is my great joy to welcome you to our Sunday service today. Today we'll be blessed by the presence of our own Reverend Jan Seward and our theme for this year or for this entire calendar year really has been Perfect vision, seeing through a spiritual lens, and unity is your invitation to see life with all of its challenges, with all of its perceived ups and downs, with all of its struggles, its opportunities for growth through a spiritual lens. And for this month of July, our sub-theme is play is play. So through our message, uh, messages this month, through our music, through everything we do, it's about living life in the zone, free and unrestrained. So just remember that for this, for this month of July. And happy 4th of July weekend. And uh, it is my great joy to, to bless you into our fellowship today. And so we do that with a unity blessing. I invite you to rub your hands together, getting that kinetic energy of the warm love and light between the palm of your hands. Lifting that loving energy out into the universe. I invite you to affirm after me, we love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. We behold the Christ in you. Amen. And now is the time in our service where we bless one another with a greeting. So I invite you to certainly leave a comment here in the live chat or in the comments section below. And uh, just let us know you're here. We'd love to hear from you. Bless you and welcome. Please join with me in singing along with me playing the piano to lean on me. Come on, you know the words. fellowship we have. What a joy divine. Ah, 
please join with me in affirming our statement of faith. And with the power of our spoken word, we take these affirmative thoughts and put them into dynamic action through the power of speech, the power of our spoken word. And so I invite you to repeat after me, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, all love together. God the good, all love. Let's take that statement within just for a moment. Affirm these words silently. So established in a firm foundation of faith, we speak the words together again aloud of our statement of faith. And so if you'll repeat after me once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, all love together. God the good, all love. And so it is. In unity, we believe that that one presence and one power is omnipresent. And this means that that the presence of God is everywhere, in all points in space, at the same time. Wherever spirit is, the whole of spirit must be. And as we often say in unity, there is no spot where God is not. And this God presence expresses within each of us as a divine light. And that same light that was in Christ Jesus exists, lives, in you and in me. And so we light the Christ candle, which serves as a symbol and a reminder to us all that as Jesus taught us, we are the light of the world.
please join me and Lisa Ferraro in singing Shirley the Presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and a great. presence of the Lord is in this place. Mm. Wherever you are, God is. And so we begin this prayer practice this week with a simple recognition and celebration of the presence of God in all things, in all people, in all ways. We hold our world in prayer through all of its changes and all of its many facets, its many, its many forms and shifts of energy. We begin our practice of prayer with forgiveness. Forgiveness is truly an act of the will and we exercise our ability to release, to let go, so that we may give way to the flow of that all good, all love that we spoke of earlier. To know that presence and power of God more fully, we must let go of that which no longer serves us. And the choice is always ours to make. We can choose to hold on. We can choose to be right. We can choose to be bitter. Or we can choose to be open, to be receptive, to be loving. As it is said in the golden key, don't think about the problem, think about God instead. So as we let go, we free ourselves to thinking about God, the one presence and power in and through and as all things knowing that nothing can separate us from God's love or God's forgiveness. As we forgive, so we are forgiven. So I invite you now to affirm with me aloud, I forgive and I am free. Deep breath. And I'll speak those words again. I forgive and I am free together. I forgive and I am free. And so now we, in that consciousness of release, of freedom, of forgiveness, we turn our attention to praying with others. So we join in heart and in mind with our 24-hour prayer ministry, Silent Unity, praying affirmatively knowing that God is our help in every need, knowing, knowing 
with an absolute faith that we are spiritual beings. We are not broken or tired or lost. It's only in our consciousness that we believe these things about ourselves. When we pray affirmatively from the consciousness of the Christ light within us, we know that we are whole. We know that we are vibrant, alive, alert, awake, whole, perfect, complete, spiritual beings, the radiant life of God we are. And so that we may share that vision together of wholeness, of oneness, I invite you to speak the names aloud of those for whom you pray today. Mary Olson. Precious Spirit, we know that you answer all prayer. And the answer, we know with an absolute and unwavering faith, is always yes. And we hold that yes in our hearts as we release our prayers into your loving care and keeping. And for this time of prayer, for... For all our blessings, we give thanks in the name and through the nature of the living Christ. Amen and Amen. Let us begin our prayer time. begin our prayer time with a prayer for all those who are we are praying with and for and then gently we'll move into meditation with open hearts we remember that we're all one in spirit and as our hearts open wider we feel our connection to others and it expands and grows. We are forever connected to those who come before us, who have come before us, and who will follow. And for this, we're so very grateful. So let us now join our heart and mind in loving communion with God, the creator of all life, whose spirit is forever within each of us, directing our lives and circumstances, bringing comforting peace and wholeness. And we give our prayer support to all of our loved ones in our lives, and it is with deep gratitude that we place all our prayers with you, dear God, those spoken and those that lay silently within our hearts. We lovingly release these prayers knowing that your sacred presence is unfolding the highest good for all right now, right now. And as we move deeper into consciousness, into awareness to meditate, with that surrender, fresh in our mind and heart, let us continue to relax by simply following the breath, breathing in, 
Breathing out, in and out, becoming centered in the calm presence of God. Think only of God, our loving creator. Feel the presence of God, that comforting, uplifting presence a presence of love and security, a presence of wholeness and well-being. And it is from this awareness of pure clarity that we reach out to embrace our community, our country, our world, our galaxy. For those who are grieving, we see them comforted. For those who have experienced death, we see them filled with everlasting life. For those who are weary, in confusion, chaos, and stress, we see them filled with divine strength. For those who are lonely or depressed, we see them filled with renewed purpose. For those who are experiencing health challenges, we see them whole and complete in mind, body, and spirit. We see our world leaders filled with love and wisdom and making right decisions for the highest good of all humankind. And as you continue breathing deeply in your mind's eye, see the leaders in our beloved America, the leaders in the Middle East, Central America, Russia, Ukraine, all the world's leaders, see them infused with God's love and understanding. Feel God's peace just radiate to fill this city, this state, this country, this earth, this entire solar system. Feel the light of your being joining with the light of all those who are at this very same moment praying for peace. See your light joining with thousands who have called and are now calling Silent Unity for Prayer. See those whose names are on Unity of Columbus's prayer list. And for all of our brothers and sisters whose dream it is for people to live together in peace and goodwill on our beautiful planet Earth, in your mind's eye now, see our lights join as one, encircling the globe in swirling clouds of healing, love, and peace. Thus saith the Lord, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Is there anything too hard for me? We can do this. Lean not to your own understanding. With God all things. Not some things, but all things are possible. And let us move now into the silence, seeing with eyes of the Spirit as we behold all humanity in the light of God. In the silence, in the silence, in the silence.
I would invite you now to return your attention gently to the place and time where you are right now, feeling spiritually refreshed and grateful for a renewed awareness of God's presence within us, within each other, within our personal loved ones, and within all humanity. In the name and nature of the living, loving Christ Spirit, let us seal this time of communion and oneness with God by affirming silently three times. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. is play and it is Independence Day as I record this it's the day after as you see this so I wanted to do something playful like I usually do on the 4th of July there's no dude operate this year so I'm being playful with this I guess I'm playing doing one of the most American of things which is um, improvising jazz piano it's America's one true art form here you go Happy Independence Day weekend.
I'm the Reverend Jan Seward, and I bring greetings to you from Unity in Columbus on this historical American Independence Day holiday weekend. The Unity Worldwide Ministry theme for 2020 is Perfect Vision Seen Through a Spiritual Lens, and the sub-theme for the month of July is Play, P-L-A-Y. And the affirmation is, I play in the zone, free and unrestrained. I play in the zone, free and unrestrained. And I've titled my talk this morning, Playing in the God Zone. Playing in the God Zone. The late Unity Minister Eric Butterworth wrote, There are really only two ways to respond to life. We can cry or we can sing. The choice is up to us. We must change the prescription lens of our spiritual eyeglasses. Our job is not to set things aright, but to see things aright. End of quote. Great quote. What a responsibility, though, because a whole lot lies in the balance. I mean, think about your life. Just really contemplate deeply on your life. Just the way it is. Just look at it for what it is. Could it be true that everything happens for the best? Something to think about. So I want to begin uh, with prayer. So you may close your eyes if you like or, or not. Dear God, Give us the spiritual perception to see things from the higher vantage point. I pray, dear God, that we have the spiritual insight to stop complaining our way through life. Help us to enjoy every moment and see the good. I pray that we form a new spiritual habit of looking for and finding the God-given good in everything. I pray that we remember to give thanks continuously on the good days and the seemingly not so good days. Help us, dear Lord, to discover the silver lining in every cloud. May it be so. In the name of the living, loving Christ Spirit, amen. It's been written that if you can start the day without caffeine or pet pills, if you can be cheerful, ignoring aches and pains, if you can eat simple food and be grateful for it, if you can understand when loved ones are too busy to give you time, if you can overlook when people take things out on you, if you can take criticism and blame without resentment, if you can face the world without lies and deceit, if you can conquer tension without medical help, relax without alcohol, and sleep without the aid of drugs, if you can do all these things, then you're probably the family dog. <laughs> I mean, dogs can do all these things, but humans can. Let's continue playing in what I am calling this morning the God Zone. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever asked God for a sign? You know, give me a sign, God, give me a sign. Or do a knock, knock, knock. Who's there, God? Who's there? God, God. How do I know it's you? How do I know whether this idea that, that, that I have uh, is a divine idea or a pie in the sky idea? How do I know if the decision I'm about to make is the right decision? How do I know if the direction I'm about to, to go off in is the right direction? How do I know, God? How do I know, God? Help me, God. How do I know? Have you ever prayed like that? I certainly have. Well, I'm here to remind you this morning that there is something within each one of us 
that knows, okay? Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 8, your father knows what you need before you ask him. And in Isaiah 65, 24, it reads, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. So that even before our prayer is prayed, a solution is provided. That before the question is asked, it's already answered. That's fantastic. And, and, and these are wonderful and comforting words, but how do we know the answer that we think we are hearing is the right answer? How can we know that the solution that seems to appear is the solution? And so we search for a way to know. How can I know? How can I know? And one way uh, that we might do this is to ask for a sign. Uh, have you ever done that? Okay. Uh, just say a woman's been going out with the same man for several years, but doesn't know if she should marry him. You know, what should I do here, God? And she prays, asking for a sign from God. And, and then one day, She's sitting on the floor in her living room trying to pray about it to get an answer and she thinks she sees a sign from God. The way that the sunlight falls on the carpet seems to form a letter of the alphabet, she thinks. And the first letter is form is, is, is the first letter of the man's name. Is this a sign, she thinks? Is this the guidance I've been praying for? Is it God's way of telling me to marry the man? Or is it simply the sun shining on the carpet? Or uh, another way we seek to, uh, to know God's will for us is, is, to, is to look to logic. Uh, a man wonders if he ought to take a job that would pay more money, but it would take him to another city and leave his friends and family. And, and so he doesn't know exactly what to do. So he makes a list of all the pros and cons of the move, totaling up each column, trying to figure out if the greater number of reasons on one side means that that's the right thing to do, the best course of action, or, he wonders, should each reason be weighted, given a number value according to this, its importance. But even if he did that, does it all add up to an answer? the answer, the course that God wants him to follow? These are some things to think about. And do you see yourself in any of these scenarios? We all wrestle with the question, what's the right thing to do? Or, 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 or what would Jesus do? And my answer would be that uh, uh, Jesus would have never gotten himself into whatever mess I'm in in the first place. <laughs> all kidding aside though, Despite all the assurances we're given by the Bible and other sacred texts, we still search, we pray, we meditate, we look for outer signs, we apply logical tests, and we seek the advice of friends, strangers, therapists, ministers, anyone who will listen. And still, we don't know. How can we be sure? If only God could speak to us and boom out clear instructions from, you know, a voice on high uh, uh, in full stereophonic sound, you know, like the old uh, uh, Ten Commandments with Carl, Carl Charlton Heston. If only we do, we would gladly follow. But you know, even the booming voice of God sometimes isn't enough. Like the man who was hiking down a steep and narrow mountain trail and, and he loses his footing and he foul, falls off the side of the mountain. And tumbling through the air, he manages to grab hold of a little bush sticking out of the mountainside. And as he's hanging on for dear, dear life, he looks down and sees it's at least 500 feet to the bottom, which is filled with rocks. He looks up and hollers, is there anyone up there that can help me? And a great voice 
booms from heaven. Yes, son, I can. And stunned to hear the voice, he cries out, God, is that you? Yes, my son. It is the great I am. And relieved beyond belief to be hearing directly from God, the hiker asks, well, what do you want me to do, God? Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And the great voice replies, just let go. Uh, let go? The hiker looks down at the 500 foot drop in the rocks below. He looks up again and asks, is anybody else up there I could talk to? I love that one. What you and I are looking for is a kind of guidance and wisdom from God or spirit that theology calls discernment. In unity, it's one of our 12 powers, the power of judgment. And so if you saw yourself in any of the examples I just gave, you could take comfort in knowing that people throughout time have searched for discernment. Religious leaders and even, even saints have spent most of their lives trying to learn not only how to do it themselves, but how to teach others to try to attempt it. So maybe those of us still looking for signs and patterns of sunlight or lists of pros and cons or asking anyone who will listen are not so misguided or hopeless after all. And so this morning, this talk is all about playing in the soul zone, free and unrestrained. Playing in the soul zone, free and unrestrained. Following what I am calling our soul signals, S-O-U-L-S-I-G-N-A-L-S, our soul signals. And what do I mean by soul signals? I mean our so-called fifth sense. You know, intuition, inner knowing, conscience, divine guidance. It's the voice of God within always available to guide and direct us to our highest good. And one of the ways that we can become more consciously aware of God being in our life is to cultivate the ability to catch the signals from our soul. Because the question is not whether the signals are there, but whether you and I are living in the right frequency to receive them. Because when we are, we can have a direct experience of God being a very real presence in our lives, and we all want that. Isaiah 31 reads, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a voice, a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. But is there a way to nurture, to cultivate an inner listening? Is there a way to get on the right frequency to receive these signals? Is there a direct God line that we can get on? You know, you and I pray, and then we get up from that prayer like we never prayed at all. We don't start looking for that new job or new relationship or new place to live or whatever we're praying for and so on. No, we get up from that prayer and we get right back to worrying. I know I'm not the only one that does that, friends. We need to trust God enough to at least act like we've prayed. And is there a way to know that we're on that frequency, that what we're hearing is really divine guidance, our soul signal, rather than something coming from our ego or uh, wounded fear-based perceptions of life? Well, I wanna share three ways that can help us to reach the point where we can instantly know. And then I'll share a surefire question for us to ask ourselves to discern if we are in fact receiving a soul signal. And the first is to realize, recognize, acknowledge that we actually have a soul signal. You know, it may sound obvious, 
but, but, but this is critical. If we don't think or believe that there are signals for us to catch, then we're not able to tune into the frequency that you catch them. And God, in its infinite intelligence, put these signals in us all. And when I say us all, I don't just mean human beings. Remember the uh, song made popular on, on Sesame Street? It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart. Open up your eyes. Both. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us, by and by. I love that song. My kids used to love it. Take the salmon, for instance. The salmon's soul signal uh, tells it to swim upstream at spawning time. The homing pigeon, their soul signal tells it where, tells it where home is. And nature has endowed the uh, monarch butterfly with a similar innate sense of direction. Every fall, hundreds of thousands of them migrate south and gather on tree trunks and, and, and large branches to hibernate, even though they've never been to those particular glens before. They leave in the spring, never to return, winging their way north to lay their eggs and then die. And their offspring are born with the same inner programming that directs them to show up in the same glens the next year. Don't you think that some kind of soul signals system is encoded into your and my true nature as well? Do you think that we've been less equipped than the salmon, the homing pigeon, pigeon and the monarch butterfly, to name a few? Well, I think not. I think not. Dr. Chauncey Suits, physicist at GE, is quoted as saying, after preparing yourself in your chosen field, you must be alert to hunches and keep an open mind. Do not rely too much upon logic. Try to locate the treasure chest of ideas which lie hidden within you. In the God Zone, from our title to the, today, the treasure chest of soul signals lies within each one of us. It's a divinely natural faculty within every one of us. But when we don't believe it or realize it, we're like the people that Jesus was talking about when he said in Mark 8, ye have eyes and see, ye have ears and hear not and see not. So you and I need to be consciously open to seeing and hearing our soul signals by first acknowledging, realizing that, that, that we have them. Because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And that's Hebrews eleven six. And so... We move on to number two, and we acknowledge that, that we have them. And number two is to be open to receiving them. And we need to make a conscious decision to listen to and for our inner guidance. And so we open up ourselves to receive. We've dialed into the frequency on which our soul signals are broadcasting, but we must first be open to receive the signals. And to, the, to, uh, to illustrate the importance of being open to uh, receive, there's an old story about the meeting of a knowledgeable professor and a wise Zen master. And the professor introduces himself to the Zen master and announced that he would like to learn something about Zen Oh, very good, said the Zen master. Please come in. And after they were seated, the Zen master began by speaking about the vital importance of ethical uh, living in Zen. Yes, yes, interrupted the professor. Ethics is a fascinating topic, isn't it? I've studied several branches of it. In fact, I actually wrote a book on it. And he immediately launched into a lecture on the theories of ethics. Ah, oh, 
I see, said the Zen master gently. When the professor stopped to draw a breath, in Zen, the master continued, the correct motivation for saying or doing anything is very important. And so we try to say only what is truly helpful. Well, said the professor, there are several theories on that, and I must say that I find each of them flawed. And he quickly launched into a long lecture on the different series, theories. Hmm, I see, said the Zen master, when the professor finally paused for a moment. Would you like some tea, he said. Why, yes, thank you, replied the professor. The Zen master smiled and poured uh, uh, until the professor's cup was full. Poured until the water or the tea filled the saucer with, with the tea and continued pouring as the tea ran over the table. And the professor, a man really, really lost for words, was stunned into silence. But when the hot tea started to pour in his lap, he leaped up yelling, stop, stop, can't you see the cup is full? It can't take any more. Why, yes, I can see that, smiled the Zen master. And can't you see that your mind is completely full of old ideas and so can't take in new ones? Therefore, you can't possibly learn about Zen. That's a good story to remember. If you and I are locked in relationship with our five senses, in other words, locked into only what we can physically see, hear, touch, smell, taste, then we can't be open to our soul signals because we're on another channel, on another frequency. If we are locked in our fears, we can't be open to hear our soul signals. If we're locked into our prejudices or preconceived notions, we cannot be open to hear our soul signals. We must remain unlocked and open to receive them. We must be willing to play in the zone, free and unrestrained. And three, then we must act on our soul signals. And again, there's a story, an old story. Two men who were walking in a field and a bull charged them. And one man scampered up into a tree while the other stood defiantly in the bull's path. Get up here, you idiot, called the man uh, uh, in the man in the branches. The Lord will protect me, shouted the other man. No, get up here, you idiot. And the other screamed again just at the very moment that the bull batted the man on the ground, tossing him into the air like a rag doll, and then trotted off triumphantly back into the woods. And the friend scampered down from the tree to help his bruised friend. I thought for sure the Lord would help me, complained the injured man. He tried, answered his friend. Didn't you hear him telling you to climb up into the tree? Think about that one. This story vividly illustrates the third and critical way to dial into the frequency of our soul signal. And that is to follow the signal. Take action. The spirit within us is God, so we succeed when we listen to and seek to follow the spirit's urgings. This is the final way we align our frequency with our soul signal. I am suggesting this morning that it's time to listen and to follow. It's time to listen and do what we're told. It's time to listen and to obey. Jesus said in Luke 2:49. I must be about my father's business. Now, for those of us who may have authority issues, we don't need to get bent out of shape here. It's not because someone is telling us what we have to do. This is not a parental type thing. This is not an authoritarian thing. Now, we know that humans need water, food, clothing, and shelter. But Jesus says in Matthew 4, 4, that there's something else we need. It is written that man shall not live, live by bread alone, but by every word 
which proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, we need food for our soul. We need soul food. Reverend uh, Mary Morrissey in her book, Building Your Field of Dreams, wrote, Calmly, clearly, and without judgment, our inner voice is always ready to help us, to help us move toward our highest good anytime we choose to listen. As we increasingly listen and follow our inner guidance, we find ourselves automatically navigated towards our dream. You will be told very specifically, listen, and you will be led. It helps to remember that God can only do for us only what God can do through us. Willingly follow your voice of God, even if you'd rather sit home and worry and feel sorry for yourself. And I'm sure we could all relate to that. It's critical that you and I act on our guidance for two reasons. The first is the obvious one because it was going to lead us to our highest good. And the second one may not be so obvious. You and I strengthen the signal every time we act on it. And so the next time it's even stronger and the next time even stronger yet. But we weaken it every time we don't. So the next time it's weaker and the next time it's weaker yet. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, but, 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 but you might still be thinking, how do I know for sure if it's my soul signal? How do I discern if this is a signal from my soul? How do I know if it's really divine intuition and guidance and not just my ego or wounded and fear-based perceptions of life speaking to me? Well, there's one surefire question that uh, we can uh, ask ourselves that will help us to discern, to know. Are you ready for it? <laughs> that question is, does what I think I'm hearing empower me, make me feel loved and worthy, and does no intentional harm to others? That's it. Does what I'm hearing empower me, make me feel worthy and loved, and does no intentional harm to others. Really quite simple. The voice of God within us, the voice of God in our life, is never one of correction, punishment, discipline, or scolding, no matter what you've been taught. The voice of God within us, the voice of God in our life, never contaminates never condemns or seeks to harm. It always empowers. It's honest and based on integrity. And our body, mind, emotions, and spirit know it. K-N-O-W, capital. And we know it as the, we we'll feel a sense of peace, the peace beyond understanding that settles in our very bones. You know, you could just feel it. And we feel its rightness in our body, mind, spirit, relationships, and life. You just know that you know that you know. So I ask you again this morning, do you want to experience the presence of God in your life on a regular basis? Then align with your soul's signals by knowing that they are there, by being open to them, and then by acting on them. And you and I will move into more and more and feel and manifest our oneness, our unity, our connection to the source of life, which is God the good, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Let us pray. Almighty God, we stand in faith that we have within us the spiritual strength and the personal power to move through any change with ease and grace. We stand firm in the truth of who we are, infinite beings of your love, light, and truth, forever and ever evolving and expanding. Today and every day, we stand tall in love, in peace, and in joy. May God lovingly bless all of us this week and beyond as we continue to 
live, move, breathe, play, and have our very being in the God zone. It is done, and it is so. Amen and amen. We give thanks to all of you for being a part of this service. Hmm. Your very presence here is making a difference as we uplift the consciousness of our world through this unity message that is so sorely needed, I feel, in, in our time. And I give a very heartfelt thanks once again to Reverend Jan for her wonderful message. And, of course, as always, to Jim Maneri, our music director and video producer, who puts this Sunday service experience together every Sunday for, for you um, through the courtesy and through the, through the facilities of his gymnasium studios. Thank you, and God bless you. I want to just uh, invite you to pencil in, pencil in a save the date um, for August 2nd the first Sunday of August, um, for that is, at this point, our um, return to in-person services. Uh, they will be a hybrid service, a hybrid meaning both an in-person service as well as a live stream uh, through our uh, Facebook page. The Facebook Live page for Unity of Columbus is facebook.com forward slash unity of Columbus forward slash again live L-I-V-E I'll say that again facebook.com forward slash unity of Columbus forward slash live and so when that time comes that will be the way um, to receive our service online and uh, we um, continue our mission together and um, just hold our world in our highest affirmative thought. So again, thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for being a part of this, this mission and movement that we call unity. God bless you.
Let us now bless the children of our world, knowing that mm, they truly are our future. So rubbing your hands together, remember the blessing we did earlier, we bless all the children of our world, certainly the children in our lives, in our families, but all the children everywhere, wherever they may be, if you will affirm after me, we love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you. We truly appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. We behold the Christ in you. Just as you are. Just as you are. And just as you are. Please join me in singing, I am free, I am unlimited. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now, I am free. I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free. I am unlimited. Right now. Right now. We are free and unlimited. Right now. Right now. And in that spirit, let us affirm our prayer for protection. Again, I'll speak it in parts and invite us to repeat. The light of God surrounds us. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. And so I want us to really feel the words of our closing song that we do each week. Let us truly feel and know and be peace on earth.
for our closing prayer, remember that you're free and unlimited. There are no chains that bind you. In the God zone, the light of God goes before you. The love of God embraces you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is. So go with God. Because God is always going with you. Peace and love.